Hello and welcome into the Birds and Braves podcast. I'm Luke Winstall. Thank you all for tuning in. Today I'm joined by the voice of the Atlanta Hawks, Steve Holman. Mr. Holman, thank you for joining me on the show. Sure, Luke. It's my pleasure. My first question for you, now that we're in the NBA playoffs, who do you like in the East and the West just overall? Is there a team that you're picking to win it all? Well, I think until Golden State loses, uh, you have to go with the chance. Uh, I, I think until somebody beats them, uh, you have to figure they're the favorites to win the whole thing. Uh, the East is kind of up for grabs right now. The Celtics with that lead over Milwaukee, and uh, you know, then you, you've got Philadelphia tied up with Toronto right now as we speak. So, uh, you know, I think it's up grabs, but uh, a lot of people think, and, and I kind of do too, that maybe the uh, preview of the finals is this uh, Houston and Golden State series. So, uh, we'll see how it all shakes out over the next uh, month or two. So now to talk about the Atlanta Hawks, what was your biggest takeaway from last season? Uh, I think uh, my biggest takeaway from the season was that uh, we were way ahead of schedule, I think, uh, uh, much more so than anybody thought. Uh, you know, our players, our coaches, uh, you know, I think they made some great strides during the season. Trey was terrific. John Collins uh, emerging as a real star in the NBA in his second year, and uh, I, I just think that for them together for the next 10 years is going to be fun to watch. And then you add a couple of more draft picks here. Uh, you know, if the ping pong balls fall right, uh, I think they've got a great chance to uh, to pick up uh, some free agents along the way and uh, just add to the experience of last year. And I, I think that the future certainly looks bright right now. Yeah, and you mentioned the Hawks being ahead of schedule. They had a young team, obviously, last season with some fairly low expectations coming in. But who do you think or what do you think was the most pleasant surprise in the 2018-19 season? Well, I, you know, I, I just think the way that they came together and the, the, the way that they, they hung in there on all these games and, and really never quit, and uh, it was just terrific to watch Trey improve as the year went on. Uh, you know, we had Jeremy Lin with him for the first half of the season to help him along, and then you kind of let uh, Trey get the training wheels taken off and uh, – you know that second half of the season, he was he was really terrific. Uh, and John Collins, as I mentioned, uh, you know was was stellar right from the start. He missed the first 15 games with that ankle injury, but uh, after that, he just came on gangbusters. And uh, you know the addition of Vince Carter really helped a lot. Uh, having that veteran presence, you know, not only in the locker room but on the floor too. He had a very outstanding year shooting threes and and just being the you know steady force that he was for the Hawks. And he really helped Lloyd. Uh, Pierce out a lot, I think, in the locker room and uh, really became another coach. So, uh, you know, he's announced that he's coming back for another year, whether it's with the Hawks or not, we don't know at this point, but uh, Vince was tremendous and it really helped out, I I think, the young guys uh, a great deal. You talk about Vince being another coach with the head coach, Coach Pierce, now that you've seen him for a year, what do you like most about him and what he did in his first year with the team? Well, I was very impressed with with Lloyd Pierce. You know, he came in uh, the first head coaching job, but he'd been in the league for 12 years as an assistant coach, and he's really kind of seen it all. He was part of the Philadelphia most recently, the so-called process. Uh, before that, he was with LeBron James for a, for a year at Cleveland. Uh, he was also a very integral part of the uh, development of the Golden State team with Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson and that whole group. So, I mean, he's really uh, he came in here with a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And he, as he said himself, he's taken a lot from each of the coaches that he's worked for. He was with Memphis for a while too, so uh, you know he brought all of that to the table here in Atlanta. And I just think he was the perfect coach for the young guys. He's got the right temperament for it, and uh, you know, along with that, he certainly knows what he's doing. So I mean, I, I think that he brought that that winning mentality to this team, and and they just had to never quit. Uh, Uh, attitude, and uh, it was just, I think he was the perfect uh, coach to to come in here at this time. One big debate among NBA fans, and especially Hawks fans, is that Rookie of the Year award, and with Trey Young, especially with the second half of the season he had, should he be the 2018-19 NBA Rookie of the Year, or how do you see that battle playing out? Well, I mean, in my opinion, he, he certainly should be because he did so many, you know, big things for the Hawks as far as winning games and and the improvement that he made over the year. But I think that uh, it's probably going to shake out that Doncic will win it. 
Uh, I think a lot of these national writers that vote on on the awards uh, had their minds made up in November. Uh, you know, they, that, and I don't know how many people uh, that vote on that uh, had an actual opportunity to watch Trey night after night like we did. Uh, a couple of years ago, the NBA took away the votes from uh, all of the local broadcasters and, and beat writers, so they've made it a national panel now. Uh, it used to be three from every city could vote, and it would usually be, you know, the radio broadcaster, the TV broadcaster, that you know, maybe the beat writer or columnist or whatever. But, uh, you know, now that they've gone to that national panel, I think that there's, there's uh, less of a chance for somebody like Trey to win it. Another big talking point in the offseason for the Hawks right now is the NBA draft. Is there any player that you have your eye on? I know Zion Williamson's huge, but the Hawks may not be likely to get that number one overall pick. But is there anyone out there, maybe outside of Zion, that you have your eye on in the draft? Well, you know, the thing about it is I, I don't, you know, I, 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 let the, I let Travis Schlink and his people decide that. And, uh, you know, they know a whole lot more about that than I do. I, you know, didn't really follow the college game all that closely during the year. I, I let them make those decisions. And I'm sure with the, uh, with the draft history that, that Travis has had, uh, not only here, but with Golden State and, and bringing in John Collins at a number 19 and uh, bringing in Kevin Herter at a number 19. So I have complete confidence that, you know, whatever pick we get with our pick and, and, and if we get lucky with that Dallas pick, uh, I think they're going to make the right decisions. And, uh, you know, I'll just let the chips fall where they may. And when, when they make those decisions, you know, I'll call the games with those players. <laughs> is there, in terms of the roster, a a team need that is the biggest team need this off season that the team could look to fill? Well, a lot of it depends on on what happens uh, as far as you know our own free agents and and you know if if they stay or if they go and uh, you know what needs they need to fill on that. So uh, I think that's a lot of stuff that's going on right now as far as evaluations and. Uh, you know, team needs, and uh, I, I think as the as the time gets closer to the summer league, uh, that Lloyd Pierce and Travis and his staff will get together and, and figure all of that out. But uh, you know, I think as of right now, you just look at it as a young developing team, and you've got a good core. Uh, you, you've got Trey Trey Young, you've got John Collins, you've got Kevin Herter, you've got Amari Spellman. Those are four top notch uh, young guys that are right there. And then you add to our their you know veteran group. The, some of the guys have only been here two or three years, so. It's a very young roster, and uh, you know I think that uh, as as it molds and shapes during the summer, uh, when they get to camp in October, uh, I think we'll we'll know better how it all shakes out at that point. And being the radio broadcaster, calling all of the games for the Atlanta Hawks this past season, do you have a favorite moment or something that you'll always remember from that 2018-19 season? Well, I, you know there were several, but I think Trey, you know, hitting those game-winning shots were 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 very big, and uh, you know, just to watch the the exuberance of, of youth, you know, I think that was a lot of fun. And you know, I've done it now. This will be my 35th year coming up, so uh, you know, I've seen a lot of great things happen. But this this group was a lot of fun to to be around, and uh, it was one of my more enjoyable years. I mean, we didn't you know win a, uh, as many games as we have in the past with some of these teams, but. Uh, I just thought it was so much fun, and, and, and I enjoyed being around the young guys. They made me feel young. and uh, I just think it's, uh, you know, th- there were so many great moments like that, but Trey winning games was, was especially big, I thought. Mr. Holman, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for your time. All right, Luke, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome.